Welcome to the lesson on sodium potassium pump, a portion in bio inorganic chemistry. Objective of this lesson is to understand the mechanism of sodium potassium pump in biological system. The learning outcomes are what is sodium potassium pump? Why is it named as a pump? What is its role in biological system? And how does this sodium potassium pump work? All these things we are going to understand in this video lesson. The sodium potassium pump or sodium potassium ATPH is a plasma membrane that maintains the concentration gradient of ions between the extracellular and intracellular environments, which in turn helps to maintain osmotic equilibrium and membrane potential in cells. And the sustained concentration gradient is crucial for physiological processes in many organs and has an ongoing role in regulation of the cell volume and in the cell signal transduction. This generation of ionic gradient is an energy dependent process where the energy comes from hydrolysis of ATP where ATP gets converted to adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate and this mechanism responsible for maintaining this concentration gradient is the enzyme sodium potassium ATPH and this is also called as sodium pump. Let us look at the ionic concentration in extracellular and in, in intracellular environment. Sodium ion its concentration has to be 145 millimolar in extracellular environment and it has to be 12 millimolar in intracellular environment. Potassium ion it has to be 4 millimolar in extracellular environment and 155 millimolar in intracellular environment. That means concentration of sodium ion has to be lower inside the cell and concentration of potassium ion has to be higher inside the cell. And in order to maintain this appropriate concentration with respect to their location, diffusion of sodium and potassium ions occurs through ion channels in plasma membrane and this is being done by sodium potassium ATPH enzyme through active transport mechanism. Now the question arises why the sodium potassium ATPH is called as a pump sodium potassium pump. It is because this sodium potassium ATPH is pumping the sodium ions from inside the cell to outside the cell and pumping sodium potassium ion from outside the cell to inside the cell. Because of this the name is sodium potassium pump. For every hydrolysis of ATP molecule, three sodium ions are being pumped from inside to outside the cell and two potassium ions are being pumped from outside the cell to inside the cell. The overall stoichiometry of the reaction can be written as three sodium ions in from inside, two potassium from out outside and uh, the energy coming from ATP hydrolysis that then the uh, sodium ions are being taken outside the cell and the potassium ions are being taken to inside the cell. So this is how the sodium potassium pump works. Another uh, key point is this sodium potassium ions movement acts against the concentration gradient. That means the sodium ion concentration inside the cell is lower and concentration of sodium ion is higher outside the cell and the sodium ion is being pumped from inside to outside that means from low concentration to high concentration. Ideally the ion flow should be from high concentration to low concentration but in this case the reverse is happening that means the ions are moving ions are being pumped against the concentration gradient that is why it involves active transport mechanism. Active transport is the movement of a substance or an ion in this case against its concentration gradient that is from low to high concentration. Let us look at a scheme that depicts the mechanism of sodium potassium pumps working. Let us start uh, this this is this is the you know uh, the membrane and this is outside the cell and this is inside the cell. This region is inside the cell and this region is outside the cell. 
Now let us look at how this uh, sodium potassium pump works. What are the steps involved in this? In first step, sodium ions they bind to this enzyme and that uh, prompts the phosphorylation process. In this uh, step, this ATP gets converted to ADP and inorganic phosphate. As a result, this enzyme gets phosphorylated. That is why this P, this phosphor phosphate ion is attached to enzyme. And this process, this phosphorylation induces a conformational change in the enzyme. That is why there is a, in third step, there is an inversion taking place. And that is why the shape is inverted. And next to this, these ions, three sodium ions which are bound to this uh, enzyme are being released outside the cell with this step. You can look at the three sodium ions in green circles, they are released outside the cell. And in uh, next to this, potassium ions which are present outside the cell, they bind to this free enzyme. This enzyme is free now. Once these sodium ions are released, this enzyme is free now and this free enzyme is bound to potassium ions. Now next uh, interesting process is binding of this potassium ion into enzyme catalyzes this dephosphorylation process. That means this phosphate gets detached and this phosphate again gets converted to ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And then this enzyme binds to potassium ion and next to this, this there is a inversion taking place, conformational change of enzyme is taking place. So this enzyme get inverted and this potassium ion gets released inside the cell. Here you can see. And the enzyme is free now. And this enzyme can is bound to ATP. The ATP which is uh, generated because of this deep phosphorylation at this step can bind to this enzyme and the enzyme is again ready for this process. You know. So this is how the process continues and that's how the sodium potassium pump works in biological system. I have said already what, what is written here. So that the mechanism Another uh, model I have seen somewhere, I found it interesting. So another scheme uh, in one of the papers, uh, it is also very similar. In this case, you can see this is, uh, uh, you know, enzyme you have is uh, bound to E1 is the enzyme bound to ATP. Now in this case, this sodium ions are bound to this enzyme. As a result of this, there is a deep, uh, there is phosphorylation one phosphate is attached to enzyme E1 and these three sodium ions are bonded to it. And further, these ions are being released outside the cell and uh, this uh, two potassium ions which are in uh, uh, saffron color are bound to this enzyme, free enzyme. And this there is again a uh, conformational change and these potassium ions are being released inside the cell and again this enzyme is bound to ATP and uh, further it is ready to uh, work. You know. So this is how the process continues and that's how concentration of sodium and potassium ions are being maintained in intracellular and extracellular environment in biological system. Thank you very much for your attention. If you liked it, please share with others who need it. Thank you. I, uh, Please feel free to write your comments on my email or at the YouTube channel or in my Twitter handle. Thank you very much.